So I want to talk about podcasts, and I really like podcasts. I have some favorites. I'll bet you do too. It's a hugely growing new form of media storytelling. I added it to this class about a year ago. We used to do traditional NPR style audio stories, but now we've added podcasts and several of my students have done it with some really fun effects. So it's a neat idea. It's a really cool thing to do and I want to walk you through it. So let's take a look at podcasts. And again, I'll talk about some, some different topics you can do with um, podcasts and walk you through really how to think about these carefully. So uh, think about your favorites. Um, you may like, uh, like, what do you like? Do you like music? Do you like movies, entertainment, uh, different foods, restaurants, that kind of thing? You probably have some topics, even if you don't listen to podcasts, that have podcasts about them. I love politics and history, so I listen to multiple podcasts about that. Uh, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you snippets of some of my favorite podcasts. Freakonomics is an hour long, really in-depth podcast where you get people like the Federal Reserve Chairman, the Treasury Secretary, they come on and talk at length and detail about serious economic issues. That's not for everybody, I freely admit it, but I'm a nerd, I study media economics, so I really like that one. But I also love some much different podcasts. So uh, Retropod is this really short three and four minute little bite-sized podcasts from Washington Post. They're super short. They're little snippets in history. Washington Post also does one called Constitutional. And it takes a little look at a piece of one of the 27 amendments to the Constitution in really short form. Those are more highly produced. They have like music, sound effects. They're a lot of fun. Let me give you a listen to a couple of these. Uh, but think about like what your favorites would be and why. And again, you probably have different interests and some really interesting ideas that somebody does a podcast on. Sports is huge in this area, fiction and nonfiction. Uh, dramatic, especially like true crime is a really popular podcast genre. So again, one of my favorites is, um, uh, is called Constitutional. And this is a podcast done by people at the Washington Post. And it's a look at the different 27 amendments to the Constitution. One is the 18th Amendment. It was, it was passed in 1920. The 18th Amendment was prohibition. Now, it's interesting because it banned the sale and distribution of alcohol. It did not ban the consumption of alcohol, which is kind of a backdoor catch. But a fascinating thing happened during prohibition, which ran from 1920 to 1933, was overturned by the 21st Amendment. Check this out. This is a snippet of, um, of a constitutional podcast about prohibition. George L. Cassidy knew every nook and cranny of Capitol Hill. The desks and drawers and bookshelves in senators' offices, the underground poker room, the doorways guarded by the Capitol Police. He was clean-shaven, baby-faced, in his late 20s, early 30s. He was smartly dressed, tie, vest, fedora, shined shoes that clicked on the marble floors. He had keys to congressmen's offices and his own stowaway spot in the Cannon House office building. Cassidy was a bootlegger who supplied Congress with illegal liquor during Prohibition. Isn't that amazing? That's crazy. So like members of Congress during Prohibition had their very own favored delivery person for illegal alcohol in their offices. It was just amazing. So that's an example of a great podcast. And I just love this one. Again, Constitutional from Washington Post. Another one that the Washington Post produces is uh, called Retropod. These are really tiny. Um, I mentioned I like uh, I like Freakonomics, which is over an hour long form, deep interviews with people. Uh, Retropod's very different. Some of these are three minutes long. They're super little short snippets of interesting periods in history. Uh, here's a great one, again, on a similar topic from the one I just played. Today, let's go back to the fall of 1787. It had been a long week after an exhausting summer. On September 14th, Delegates at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia put down their quill pens. They had just completed the final draft of the U.S. Constitution, which they would sign three days later. It was a Friday night, and one delegate named George Washington promptly went on the bender that began America. The founder's unofficial watering hole was called City Tavern located four blocks from Independence Hall. 
that night, Washington was the guest of the Light Horse of Philadelphia, the volunteer cavalry troops that had crossed the Delaware and had spent an infamous winter at Valley Forge. The first troop, as a unit came to be known, could fight. And boy, could they drink. Just listen to their tab from the end of the night. 54 bottles of Madeira wine, 60 bottles of Claret, 22 bottles of Porter, 12 bottles of beer, and 8 bottles of cider and 7 bowls of punch, both of which were probably alcohol. In all, according to the itemized bill for the evening from the troops' archives, more than 45 gallons of booze were served to 55 men who also got dinner, fruit, relishes, and olives. <laughs> That's an amazing story. Again, this is the founders of the country who signed the Declaration of Independence. Some of them, this is the people who met in Constitution, uh, the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia to write the U.S. Constitution. When they finally finished this arduous task with multiple meetings, weeks of negotiation, they went and got hammered at a local bar. That's Retropod. It's a great podcast. And again, these, that whole snippet, the whole podcast, that whole podcast is only four minutes long. It's fantastic. Here's another example. This one's very different. This is a, a listen to a podcast also from the Washington Post called Moonrise. This one's a little different because some of these others, Retropod, for example, goes on and on. It's these little four, five, three-minute snippets from history, but there are dozens and dozens of them. Constitutional, they discreetly did a couple dozen because there are 27 amendments to the Constitution. Some amendments got more than one treatment, but really it's like a couple dozen, three dozen episodes, then it ends. Moonrise was also from the Washington Post. It was a very discreet podcast built around 12 episodes, uh, very much the backstory of a couple of people you may not know about in, uh, in the moon landing. Werner von Braun was a, a German engineer who came to the U.S. and led the U.S. space program. Sergei Korolev was the Soviet engineer who led their space program, the father of Sputnik and of space flight for the Soviet Union. And this is like a 12-episode long form. These episodes are an hour long each, very highly produced sound effects, real audio from America's space missions, uh, really in-depth, really engaging podcast. But it's got a beginning and end. It's kind of like a telenovela. It's 12 episodes from the 1950s, the dawn of the space program through July 20, 1969, when Apollo 11, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, landed on the moon. And here's a little snippet. You knew about the moon landing, uh, uh, Apollo 11, again in July 1969, but I'll bet you didn't know that at the very time Apollo 11 was orbiting the moon, about to send Aldrin and Armstrong down to land, the Soviets had a spacecraft orbiting the moon, planning a landing at the same time. This is a little snippet from that podcast. As the astronauts were circling the moon and planning their landing, a Soviet spacecraft was circling the moon, plotting its landing too. That spacecraft was called Luna 15. It had the same name as the very first probe to hit the moon, which Sergei Korolev had designed. In early 1969, shortly after the successful Apollo 8 flight, the Soviet Union realized that it wouldn't be able to pull off a human landing on the moon before the United States did. So it switched tactics. It decided to send a robotic probe to the moon to collect lunar samples. If it could do that either before or around the same time as the Apollo 11 flight, then it would look as though both countries had made it to the lunar surface and back around the same time. So I love podcasts for the same reason I love to follow the news. I love to read uh, nonfiction as I learn things. And, and this is just a great example of that. Again, this is a story that was originally told, I think, in an article in the Washington Post. A lot of the little retropod three and four minute snippets come from articles that ran in the Washington Post. But that's a really neat story. And again, they can add in. And this one has that episode has snippets of interviews and stuff. From, uh, from people who are actually active with the space program. You hear, you hear Armstrong and Aldrin on the headsets during this podcast going back and forth with Mission Control at Johnson Space Center in Houston. So a uh, fascinating podcast and a great one. So podcasts can be really powerful. Um, Mark Marone's podcast, WTF, featured President Obama, June 22nd, 20, 2015. 
uh, President Obama was the first president, sitting president to actually go on a podcast. And it's because podcasts were really upstart media at the time. Uh, they're much more prominent now. So what's different, what's unique about podcasts? First, they're portable. And I even do some of my lectures as podcasts so that students can listen to them driving to campus, walking across campus. Uh, it can be really intimate. You can use sound effects. You're listening to someone's voice. You can sort of get immersed in this scenario. And so I think that can be really unique uh, and powerful. They're engaging. They can be short and punchy, like some of the examples I uh, share. They can be long and immersive and detailed and really informative and make you want to go look other things up, uh, which is a really powerful thing. And it can be on all kinds of stuff. Again, comedy, sports, news, history, politics, whatever. Uh, there's a podcast for everything. Distribution can be tricky, but it doesn't have to be. You're going to publish in here on SoundCloud and on TexasStateMultimedia.com, a WordPress site. You can record your podcast with your phone. You can publish it on one of these platforms and distribute it for free. So distribution can be tricky, but doesn't have to be. And again, the price of entry is amazing. It's through the floor. It's basically free. So uh, a decade ago, 15 years ago, only a handful of Americans that consume podcasts, about one in 10. Now more than half of Americans regularly consume podcasts. Again, this probably doesn't surprise you because I suspect you're in that category. Podcasts aren't new. Uh, they've been around for a while. They're a classic form of journalism. They've grown steadily. Uh, again, they're hugely popular. There are some advantages, advantages to them for you as multimedia journalism students. For example, audio production is an important skill, and we're going to cover that in this course anyway. Uh, but podcasts are just another variant of that. You're recording audio, you're editing audio, publishing the audio. So it's the same thing. Podcasts can take different formats. They can be a serial format. So this is where you come up with an idea for a big picture topic like food. And then your weekly uh, episodes of it are little snippets, the nuggetized versions of that topic. Favorite recipes, ways to eat on the cheap, favorite restaurants, best restaurants you know of on Uber Eats or Favor that will deliver to your house. Lots of different topics you can touch on a little bit at a time each week over a whole big topic, which might be food. Again, endless possibilities, that structure, their regular guests, your voice, your music, uh, revisiting the same topic can be comforting and draw an audience, a repeat audience. And that really opens the door for bigger distribution, for sponsors, for advertising. And so that's unique and important about podcasts. So what do you need for a podcast? You need a good idea first. And in fact, think about ideas that are appealing to you personally. Those might be ideas that also have appeal to people like you who might be your audience. So if there's something you think you'd listen to, true crime, a podcast about new music, something about sports, entertainment, then that's a topic that you might be able to make a successful podcast out of. You really want to plan. So you want to think about who would your guests be? What's the structure going to be? How often am I going to do this? Some podcasts come out every week and they go on forever. Freakonomics is like that. But some podcasts come out every so often. Austin City Limits actually records this way and runs on public broadcasting television that way. They'll record a whole bunch of musical acts back to back during the ACL Musical Festival, but you'll see them pop up at odd schedules over the course of a year. That's perfectly fine. Some podcasts have a start and a stop, like the 12 episode Moonrise podcast. Some can go on forever. And so you just have to think about it. Some might be an hour long, some might be three minutes, and you can think about those different formats. You want some some continuity. So find some music. And I'm going to show you a couple of resources here in a second where you can go find copyright free music and use that. Uh, guests are a good idea. You want decent equipment, but again, you can do a podcast with your phone for free and it's perfectly legitimate to do that. So uh, let me show you the music tool I was talking about. This is actually pretty powerful. So our library actually has a number of uh, free tools where you can go search for stuff. So let me jump in here. You can go to our homepage. So this is the library homepage for Alkec Library. I'm going to go to the search box here to the left, and I'm going to type in copyright free music. And you can actually type this in, and we have several resources that let you go search for music. So I'm going to type in copyright free music, and the very first item here is where can I find free to share content? So this is content, videos, photos, audio that I don't have to pay for. I'm going to click on that link. And it's going to take me to a research guide on copyrights. And one of the tabs, which is now selected, is where can I find free to share content? Now I'm going to scroll down and look for some music sources. And the first couple that come up are CC Mixter and Jamendo. These are both interesting sources. I'll open these in new tabs. 
just to show you. But again, there are others down here. This is copyright free music. There are places to get especially sound effects, a couple of those. Uh, sound Bible and Free Sound have sound effects. Incompetech also has some copyright free music. Just going to show a couple of examples here CC Mixter and Jim Mendo. So I can go to CC Mixter, and if I click Remixes here and then Search, I can actually put in uh, um, something like I'll search a search term. I'll just put in Tense, and it'll bring up some Tense music examples. Uh, after the war sounds promising. So there's a piece of music you might want to use on a podcast. Again, once again. This is copyright free music that you can go grab from a source. This is Jamendo. Let me click start over here. Again, I can search for stuff here too. So I'll just put in uh, a keyword and it'll search some examples for me. So uh, look at this. There's a whole album called Dramatic. So let me just try one. So, so if you're doing like a breaking news segment and you want dramatic music, there's an example of some dramatic music. And so uh, another good thing you want to do in podcast is you want to have some, some uh, copy. You want music that kind of tells your story. Let me go back and I'll, I'll jump back over to the, the PowerPoint and take a look at that. Uh, one of the things you want is sort of some familiar features. And so if you can come up with some familiar features, comforting features, let me give you a couple examples of this. I did a radio show at Texas Tech. Now this was a radio show, not a podcast, but we used the same music each time. The podcast was called Devil's Advocate and it was a political talk radio show. And what we did is we took both sides of contemporary political issues. So we would have people call in, we would have guests on the show, but we weren't right or left. We were both, and not in the middle. We would actually flip a coin to decide who was going to take a side and be liberal or conservative on an issue. The very next week, we might swap places and the other person be liberal or conservative. I brought students on this radio show. It was actually a lot of fun. And we called it the devil's advocate. So this was our music. The opinions expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of KTXT, its management, Texas Tech University, or any living person. This is the Devil's Advocate. <laughs> so because we were the Devil's Advocate, we used Rolling Stone's Sympathy for the Devil. Now that was a radio station. They had an ASCAP license. They had a license to use copyrighted music, so we were able to use that. Uh, again, uh, it was a radio show, but then we saved those as podcasts. I'm playing this from the podcast from that radio station. But again, you have copyright free items. Another comforting um, uh, piece, another comforting feature that we used on that radio show is we did some repeat things. And you'll see this in other podcasts. NPR does Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. It's one of my favorite podcasts on Saturday mornings. It's a game show based on that week's news. And they'll tell three stories. One is real, two are fake. Guests have to guess which is fake. They'll do little limericks and stuff that people have to guess, again, from that week's news. Little recurring features that draw me and a lot of other listeners back. We did a coin flip on Devil, Devil's Advocate to see, decide who was going to be left, who was going to be right. Uh, we did um, lightning round where we played a thunder sound effect, thunderclap sound effect. And those are like little one minute fast arguments about an issue. And we had Siri come on and like weigh in and do silly stuff. So here's a couple of the Siri examples that we played randomly in our show. No, absolutely not. Shame on you. <laughs> so we would have that one come on. Uh, one other one. Are you out of your mind? So we played these we played these different features uh, that were comforting features that were part of our radio show, again, that became part of the podcast. We'll look for some things like that. Again, and there are other elements. So who would you have on your show? Think carefully about guests. And you might even want to have recurring guests. If you get somebody who's a popular musician, a popular guest who starts to become part of the identity of your show, that's a good thing. But the other thing is you want to get the right guests. So you want somebody that has some expertise in what you're talking about that week. If you're doing a, a podcast about food, you may want to have somebody who owns a restaurant, who, who likes to cook different recipes, come on and talk about it. So uh, different things. Again, technology is important. You may want to have a multi-microphone setup or an omnidirectional microphone. This is kind of a circular microphone that can sit in the middle of a table and record different people. But you could do this with your phone. You can even get an external microphone. Uh, you can use headphones that plug in 
the microphone on your headphones, on your earpods or AirPods, actually can work as sort of a different microphone. You can hold it back and forth to people. You already know how to edit, but we can edit in a variety of tools. You have access to Creative Cloud, so you can use Audition. Audacity is a free download. Macs come with SoundCloud. Uh, different tools you can use. And by the way, SoundCloud lets you go in and create music loops. It's built into, I'm sorry, not SoundCloud, a garage band has music loops built in that you can go build for free uh, in GarageBand. Think about your audio quality, background noise, a quality environment, I mean, a, a quiet environment. And then think about what your audience is and target the podcast to them. Um, lots of different formats I mentioned. They can be from three minutes to over an hour. They can be every week on a schedule or they can be randomly pop up when something happens. Uh, they can be just you talking. They can be lots of guests. You can use sound effects. You can use music, but you don't have to. Different, really different formats, and there's really no limit. A uh, vodcast are interesting. Lore is a good example. I can show you that one. That's available free on Amazon. Lore is a vodcast that you can actually look at on Amazon. So you can listen to this, but you can also click and watch it like a video episode, just like you would on Netflix or other things on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, and this is some wild stories about um, horrible things from history that you can go study. And again, it's available as a it's available as an audio podcast that you can take with you, or you can go in and watch the vodcast, uh, the video element, which again is part of Amazon. So fascinating tools out there, and, and different ways you can do. There's not a wrong way really to do like uh, a podcast. And so. Um, again, lots of different topics. We've touched on some of these, and you name it. You can pick whatever you want your topic to be. There's not a wrong answer to, do, to, to picking it. You do want to think about your audience. What's your niche? What makes yours special? Uh, who do you want to, to interest to this podcast? Think about a genre format. But really, it's a limitless area uh, for research. And here are a couple of useful links, and I'll share these with you. I love that uh, a professional outlet like National Public Radio put together a guide for starting your podcast. They have lots of links, lots of examples, lots of illustrations. And again, all different shapes and sizes, all different lengths, all different formats. And they answer a bunch of frequently asked questions, some of the stuff we've talked about. And then this is Transom, which again is a podcast about podcasts. It's about audio storytelling. So this is a neat resource too. And I'll share these links with you. Again, the NPR link and uh, Transom on some best practices for how to go about doing podcasts. And this one's great because it has like student examples and stuff uh, and some best practices for how you should be if you're doing audio. So those are all parts of podcasting. And I want you to brainstorm about it. So you're doing an audio story that's required for this semester. It's one of your stories that's, uh, that's out there for multimedia. But if you wanna pair up with two or three or four other students and do a podcast instead, guess what? You could do a 30, 40, 60 minute podcast on a topic, just one episode. That would count as the audio story for maybe four students, whoever's part of it. So you could all bank that one podcast as your audio story instead of each of you doing a discrete individual NPR style podcast. So that's podcasting. Think about it. Please go listen to some podcasts, a lot of free resources to listen to them. They're a lot of fun. And if you want to try one of these, bounce some ideas off of me. I'll be happy to help you with tips on guests, production, format. And I hope some of you will consider doing that.